Yeah, is what's up? So, what is the very common concept? And sometimes in prelims and mains, they ask questions from this. What is tropical cyclone? So, I'll explain what is cyclone. So, cyclone is basically an air mass which is at very large scale. Okay, it's not a small air mass in your house. It is a very large scale air mass, and it is characterized by rotation. And rotation will obviously require a center, and this center has very low atmospheric pressure. So, this is a cyclone, a large scale air mass that rotates around a strong center of low atmospheric pressure so as you can see this is it is rotating if you can see and this is the center here you can see and this is at a low atmospheric pressure as you go out the atmospheric pressure uh, increases here so it is a tropical cyclone is an intense low pressure area and obviously it develops over either tropical region or subtropical water then what happens at low level there is an organized convection and winds which either circulate anti clockwise so just remember NAC, okay, N A C, that is Northern Hemisphere is anti-clockwise. Always remember this. This is a pet question which you basically ask. In Northern Hemisphere, it circulates anti-clockwise, and similarly you can do the ULTA, that in Southern Hemisphere it rotates clockwise. And this is an important point. As you go outward in a cyclone, the pressure increases. So as you go here, pressure will increase. This is the lowest pressure. As you go out, the pressure increases outwards. So now let us see the cyclonic belt. So tropical cyclones occurs between. So if I have to draw the equator here, where will it go from? So equator will go from somewhere here. Okay. So equator just zero to five degrees north of north or south of equator. The they do not occur. They usually occur between eight and twenty degree in the northern hemisphere as well as the southern hemisphere. Now why they don't form in five degree north south? Because of uh, very lack of Coriolis, Coriolis force in northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere like in northern hemisphere you are deflected to the right in southern hemisphere you are deflected to the left because of the Coriolis force and you need Coriolis force for the rotation without Coriolis force if there is no Coriolis force there will be no rotation of cyclone and it will not form hence 0 to 5 degree north and south on either side of equator it does not form now Coriolis effect will be maximum at the poles and it will be zero at the equator because earth is shaped in such a almost like a sphere and this is Coriolis effect is because of earth's rotation and earth rotate much faster at the equator than it does at the poles. So as you can see this is the entire Coriolis and here you will see you will not find any cyclonic activity. So as I was saying like deflection happens in the uh, as you can see right in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere the deflection happens towards the left and that is why you will start rotating okay so here it is absolutely clear and this is due to the earth's rotation and which is an imaginary force which is called as the Coriolis effect so why do cyclone rotates so because of the lot of pressure air at the center drops so there is very low pressure at the center and there is very high pressure outwards okay and as air moves from high pressure to low pressure it wants to go in the straight direction but Coriolis effect cause it to turn as you can see okay and that is why in northern hemisphere it will be anti-clockwise it will rotate like this okay and in southern hemisphere it will be clockwise so if there is no Coriolis effect cyclones would not, rot no, not rotate now how cyclones are formed so tropical cyclones they require certain conditions and this is an important concept because you should know everything like a warm moist air is derived from tropical oceans where the sea surface temperature should be 27 degrees Celsius or more. Now what happens is wind which are near the ocean surface they blow from different directions converge and they cause air to rise and st storm clouds to form. Now Coriolis force or Coriolis spin which will induce it so what it will do is so it will uh, because of the rotation of the earth so that is why cyclones start rotating. Now water warms later than the land as everybody knows so it arises in late summer and water temperature when it reaches 27 degrees celsius obviously it will lead to huge amount of evaporation huge moisture air will rise up and low pressure will intensify and as the rising air becomes cool like uh, it becomes cloud okay and when it cools it releases heat this is called as the latent heat of vaporization now this heat will provide energy to the system and obviously it will create chaos entropy will increase it will become more and more unstable more water will evaporate more air will rise up more heat is released so it becomes an engine it becomes a positive cycle 
एंड मॉइस्चर बिकम्स द फ्यूल हेयर नाउ क्यूमुल नंबर ह्यूज क्लाउड फॉर्म वर्लिंग हेयर स्टार्ट रोटरेट मूव टूवर्ड्स द कोस्ट एंड दिस फॉर्मेशन मैकेनिज्म माइट वेरी अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड बट वंस लाइक अ स्टॉम क्लाउड स्टार्ट टू रोटेट इट बिकम्स अ ट्रॉपिकल डिप्रेशन दट इज लो प्रेशर पॉइंट ओके एंड इफ इट कंटिन्यूज टू डेवलप इट बिकम अ ट्रॉपिकल स्टॉम एंड फाइनली इट बिकम्स साइक्लॉन सुपर साइक्लॉन एक्सेट्रा वेन एवर यू कट ऑफ द साइक्लॉन फ्रॉम द वॉटर बॉडी दे गेट वीक एंड वेन दे हिट लैंड दे स्टार्ट रेनिंग एंड फाइनली दे विल गेट डिसिपेटेड दे कैन नॉट कंटिन्यू फॉर एवर बिकॉज दे आर फ्यूल सप्लाई इज कट आउट ठीक है नाउ Uh, if a cyclone is very big and it is a mature tropical cyclone the center is called as the eye and it is the as you can see here and it is the area of like the lowest pressure in the entire region and here the weather is cool due to descending cool air it is a peaceful area so if you like somehow get transported to this eye you will not feel any disturbance until like you get into the outside and uh, there are a lot of rain bands formed due to the rain in the area and there is little formation like formation of little cells in which warm air goes up and cool air comes down now in my time they asked this question what is the naming of cyclones how does it happen so basically to ease the communication between the uh, like experts and the general public regarding warnings forecast so the, the name has been given usually so in world war 2 time say he they were people are naming them and in most regions what you do is predetermined alphabetic list and you alternate between male and female but in northwest pacific region majority of the names they are not personal names and they are for flowers animals foods descriptive adjectives etc and by mid 1960s all the tropical storms except in north indian ocean they were named and uh, in 2004 the indian ocean region also started the uh, naming now there are eight countries bangladesh india maldives myanmar oman pakistan sri lanka and thailand so all of them will contribute to a uh, set of names and the, whenever a cyclonic storm it develops a speed of 34 knots okay if it reaches that critical strength then the name will be assigned so every country will contribute the name and they are not arranged in alphabetical order but are arranged by the name of the country which contributed the name so as you can see this is the alphabetical order is of country's name so for example bangladesh contributed helen then india contributed leher then maldives madi uh, nanuk हुड हुड पाकिस्तान नीलोफर वर्धा तितली बुलबुल सो जब भी नाम आएगा सो यू कैन सी देयर सो एज यू कैन सी रोनू इज द वन विच हर्टर्स इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन सो दिस इज द कैटेगराइजेशन सो एज दिस इज द वर्ल्ड मीटोरोलॉजिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन क्राइटेरिया सो आई एम डी क्लासीफाइज द लो प्रेशर सिस्टम इन दी बे ऑफ बंगाल एंड दी अरेबियन सी इन टू सेवन क्लासेज सो एज यू कैन सी सुपर साइक्लॉनिक स्ट्रॉम एक्सट्रीमली सीवियर साइक्लॉनिक स्ट्रॉम वेरी सीवियर सीवियर साइक्लॉनिक डीप डिप्रेशन एंड डिप्रेशन you don't need to worry about it uh, like exact water speed is there but as you can see if you are just 50 km per hour then it is just a depression but if it reaches more than 221 km per hour and sustained wind should be there of 3 minutes average then it then it's called as like a super cyclonic storm so these are like the region of 31 17 to 33 knots and once the winds around the low pressure area reach at least 62 km per hour as you can see here they are called as the cyclonic storm or tropical cyclone and it is assigned a name so total seven classes are there and this is the classification of low pressure system in the bay of bengal and the arabian sea region so now let us see the few indian cyclones so it includes cyclone hadhad that hit the visakhapatnam in 2014 then you have cyclone vardha it was in chennai in thousands of people they were evacuated in tamil nadu puducherry andhra pradesh cyclone nada was there in like in bay of bengal it hit tamil nadu and kerala cyclone kyan was there in october 2016 in uh, east central bay of bengal and uh, like uh, although like cyclone did not make an impactful landfall strong winds blew over odisha and andhra pradesh coast and moderate rainfall happened in andhra pradesh and tamil nadu and sea continued uh, to be rough and fishermen were not advised to go there now the cyclone rono as i was saying so what happened with this is like it originated from south of sri lanka it intensified into a cyclonic storm and as usual it went to the bangladesh in may 2016 and 200 people died in sri lanka and bangladesh heavy rainfall happened in tamil nadu andhra pradesh kerala and odisha so what happens when it reaches like this it turns and it goes towards the bangladesh so that is what is the usual phenomena which happens in nature and chennai also received highest rainfall over two decades due to this cyclone 
and despite all their destructions the cyclone happens to rebalance the heat system of the earth so extra heat energy is transferred from the tropics to the temperate region that is why they are very very important to maintain the global temperatures and that is why they are the necessary evils so i hope you learned a lot about cyclones thank you for watching this have an awesome day